We are here at Air Venture in the Fun Fly Zone, and you know, looking at this minimalist aircraft, I don't know how much more fun it could get. You're right out there in the open, you got all the visibility in the world sighting down the wing. I'm Dan Johnson talking to an old friend, Chip Irwin, who is representing the Zigolo. What do we got here, Chip? Well, this is the motor glider that fits in the ultralight rules, but uh, it's a bit of a misnomer. It's not really much of a glider because it's such a open air, not non-high performance like a composite but it's a floater but, but there's no term it's pretty light floater. though so that it's what, really light it's what it lacks well. in aerodynamic cleanliness it makes up for it just being purely light well, it's right? got a big wing and so the wing loading is light and so the sink rate is low so you can go up in a, in a mild thermal day and catch those thermals and soar around on it and turn the engine off so it is a motor glider in that aspect but i think most people or maybe half of them will just prefer to go up for a quiet evening flight sure. on the smooth air. So you can do either one and uh, be perfectly comfortable and safe and, and enjoy the flight. Well, I'm an old soaring pilot, so I can attest to the fact that, you know, long glide angle, that's great. You can really reach and go bit distances or whatever. But for most people, like me, who just sort of want to fly around and have a little fun with it, sink rate, between sink rate and glide angle, sink rate's the more important. Exactly. And, and 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 also when you are flying around, whether it's gasoline or electric powered, we'll come back to that in a minute, uh, having a very light wing loading and a light aircraft and a low sink rate means you're not relying on the power plant so much, whatever it is, right? No, it's not so important. It's, uh, it's, it, the power plant gets you up in the air and then you can back off on the power and stay in the air, turn it off. You can restart the gas. Uh, if you want to talk about electric, that's really the way to go with this, though. So. Yeah, that's what you want to do. The electric might be the choice on it. Well, what do we got in here for gas power, and then we'll go turn our attention to electric. It's a 26 horsepower Vitterazzi. The engines are... It's an Italian engine? It's an Italian engine from scooters, but the powered paragliders have used them by the thousands. They're very popular. Ah, but it got its birth point in scooters. Yeah. And which they ride all over Italy. Stuff, they make millions Europe. of these. They're so much more reliable. Uh, unless, the last time I flew ultralights in Oshkosh, 1981, <laughs> and I was laughing at you my don't friends. You look that old, Jeff. Come on. I was laughing at my friends out parked in the alfalfa. Sixty seconds later, I was parked next to them. <laughs> Some of those early well, days of two strokes. Uh, two strokes stopped. They were stroking. exciting. Let's put it yeah, that way. Two strokes stopped, stopped stroking. And so, the advantage of electric. I'm sure ultralights, uh, two strokes have come a long way, but electric is so smooth. So quiet, and you could fly at 300 to 500 feet, and not have to worry about thinking about the where you can glide to to land, and and you can stay within the say shotgun range and not be worried about getting. You're not going to annoy people on the exactly, ground so much. Because you're sure. quiet. Because you can't even hear you. Yeah. So, so the 300 to 500 feet, just tooling around, and you have 45 minutes endurance. It's really a perfect you know, morning patrol or evening flight. It's a perfect mission for this. Well, let's come back to the electric for some more, but before we leave the gasoline-powered one here, because you have an electric motor set up that I want to go stand in front of and have you tell us some more. But uh, on the aircraft, first of all, I'm kind of looking down this way for the camera's view, and I'm seeing a, a, an interesting arrangement here. It looks like there's quite a bit going on with the joystick handle. Explain the airplane well, a little bit, starting with this, and just give us some of this simple uh, review of what the airplane's kind of all about, Chip. Well, it's, it's, it's a conventional three-axis control. Okay. And I've got really nice... Everything the way everybody yeah. expects. I've got my new really comfortable rudder pedal. And and there's a little throttle right here. So okay. you can just have a, a one-hand operation. Okay. All right. And an on-off switch. And there's the Armstrong starter. <laughs> Black handle for restart. Red handle float down. Don't get them confused. <laughs> well, as long as we, as long as you touch the BRS, uh, many years ago this company used to have one they called a 500. That means it had a 500 yeah. pound capacity to the canopy. Uh, they went away from that because there were a lot of these aircraft that just weren't in that weight range anymore. They went to some higher ones. You had to do a little talking to get back to this guy. Yeah, it you? took about a year, but uh, I'm selling some airplanes, and that means a quantity. And the alternative, and because uh, I go back with DRS 20, almost 30 years now, I suppose, and the alternative was having to buy an Italian version. Ah, yeah. It's a real nice shoot, but uh, kind of hurt, hurt us both a little bit to have to bring in a competitor shoot when I'm loyal to BRS. And 
And well, and they're well light. known in this country, and yeah. for that matter, around the world. And the pneumatic chute is light and a little bit less expensive, and it blows the chute out into the slipstream. And I think it'll work fine. I tested it to make sure at uh, Sebring, I did a static deployment. Oh, did you? Okay. Because I wanted to make sure. But uh, I've also deployed the rocket chutes, and there's no comparison. Yeah, uh, as, far, as far as the power of the rocket yeah. motors. Yeah, it'll get the chute out through more, through the debris. It'll deploy at a lower altitude. It'll open up quicker. So this is the one to go. Yeah, for, you know, if you're going to use a parachute, you're going to use it in a situation that's tense in some way, and you want the fastest possible action you can get. Right. No disrespect to the other products, but hard to beat the rocket motor. Yeah. I've seen it many times myself. Okay, well, let's go have a look at the electric motor chip, because we want to hear more about that, or actually, we want to hear less about it, I guess, is what we want. We want to talk about it more. Let's go have a look. So we looked at the gasoline-powered one, and uh, that's how a lot of folks are using it. Before we leave the gasoline, you just had a nice experience in China where you sold some of those, right? Yeah, I set up assembly shop. I'm responsible for the USA and the Chinese market, so I spent okay. the last month over in China. I put uh, one together from a kit in three weeks, and they got it in time for the Jingmen Air Show, introduced it to the China market. And what it's was really their response? Perfect. What did you oh, think? It's, it's, it's a phenomenal. It's, the China market is, everybody talks about it, but China doesn't really exist. It's just a lot of talk. It's really difficult to fly. But old flights have been flying there for, for years. Well, I heard a very interesting fact, and I'd like you to verify it, because I think this is news to most people, it was to me, that a Part 103 aircraft has an opportunity in China. We think of this as a U.S. only rule, no. but, but it's more than that, right? Many countries around the world adopt the FARs just as they are, including China. Many countries in Europe now are, are taking it a step further and allowing a, a little faster, or higher gross weight. Um, so there's what they call a single seat deregulated airplane, which is uh, still single, one, one person, but you make a pretty nice airplane, um, a little bit faster, a little bit more utility. In China, they just use the Part 103 as it's written with some club approval. Okay. In Germany, it's 120 kilograms, which is slightly heavier. And they also have the, the DULOV club approval where they actually, so you, have, you do have to prove that. Ah, so when you say it. club approval chip, you're referring to a non-governmental organization yeah. but with some government sanction who says, okay, that aircraft, I'm pointing over now at the Ziggler, that'll qualify. That is common in many in countries around the world. It would be like if the government said the EAA could monitor light sport. Well, instead they did it through ASTM. But uh, it's a similar type of uh, private self-regulation. Okay, cool. So you can sell the, you can and will and are selling the Zigolo to Chinese customers. Then. Absolutely. All right. Good. Very cool. All right. Let's turn our attention now back to uh, the electric motors. I guess we're looking at the old and the new here. Is that about the size of it, Jim? Yeah. So tell no, us what tell that you a means. Bit. I'll tell you about the entire integration. In China, they make millions of remote-controlled aircraft. And all they're they're like the source for the world right, on that, aren't right. they? Right, and, and instead of having to, uh, to buy a remote-controlled airplane and a kit and put it together for days or weeks and then crash it on your first flight, <laughs> you have to start all over, you buy almost ready to fly, ARTF. And it's built in China, and you buy, get a box, and you stick your wings on and put your servos in, and your airplane is built in and out. Wow. And, and, and the airplane has an outrunner motor and a lithium polymer battery and a controller and a charger. And it looks like a little bit smaller than the Ziggler. In fact, the Ziggler... The, the, the Is that right? Wow. The difference so between a, pretty a big, big RC and a Ziggler, the, it's, it's a, that bridge is really, that gap is closing rapidly. So the technology is very, very similar. So why not just make the Ziggler almost ready to fly? Because ultralight rules, you, you don't have to build it. There's no minimum build time. There's no minimum build percentage. Right. You could buy it finished, but it's a little hard to ship. So like a IKEA desk, we just finish it, put it in a box, and then ship it to the customer. A green one or a red one, a gas one or an electric one, a Camelli chute or a PRS. You know, just put the options in, mark the box, and ship it. And it comes out of the box, you know, some assembly required, batteries included, <laughs> pilot required. If you can't do it, find a teenager, he'll do it yeah, for you. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, a pictogram for a build, build, and you have a half a day of build time to put it together. Is that right? A half a day and you're ready? Yeah. So yeah. that's the almost ready to fly, which is a, a minor investment, and you'll get to know the airplane a little bit better by doing it. Yeah, well, it's, uh, and you can ship it anywhere, and uh, especially for 
markets like Europe or China where they don't have garages to store and they don't have building skills, they don't even have hand tools, it's much easier to have a, um, a finished airplane. There is no real kit market in some of these countries. Sure, I see. But for the guys in the States, well, they can still buy a kit and enjoy the uh, experience of putting together in about three weeks' time. Wow. Okay, that, so that, that's nice to do. a bunch of options there. Let's uh, go back to the electric motor and your experience. We did a video with you uh, at Sebring earlier this year, and then just a couple of months later uh, came the Sun and Fun event. And to the Sun and Fun event, you flew in and then around the pattern and demonstrated an all-electric model. Yeah. Well, so you proved that electric is something you can actually use, Chip, but we know, or many of us know, that in a Part 103 space, there's a thing about the five-gallon gas, and FAA has been pushed in various directions, and they're not ready to yield on it yet. Maybe in the future something will happen, but today, you've got to make, meet the 254-pound number, whether batteries uh, are on or not on. And you've got a very light aircraft to begin with, so you've got a little more margin to work with, but give me some of the details. Well, there's some of the frame that's very light. So with the gas what, motor on, what is I'm, really light? I'm, I'm at Put a number. 215 pounds. 215 pounds. <laughs> it's almost an unbelievably yeah. low number, but right. there it is. Well, that's a huge margin. Yeah. So and the motor, the electric motor, is a little bit lighter than the gasoline motor. So I gain a little bit there, and I also gain the motor it, itself. You're the motor about. itself, yeah, as opposed to a gasoline right. engine. Okay, right. The motor is, is in the twenty. So you get some range. buyback on that, right. and then uh, you can apply that to battery. Right? And then when I put a uh, recovery system on it, that I have a twenty-five pound cushion, and, I, and those weigh between ten and fifteen pounds. So I gain a little more capacity. So I can actually put a fifty-pound battery on. And it still be perfectly legal at, under Part 103 as it's written now. Wow. Okay. Today. This is today That's before today. any dispensation from FAA, right. which we hope no will come. Areas. But until that time comes, you still got one that people can buy, fly right. now. Exactly. And, okay. And that I, that time. I what kind of duration does that give you? That well, 50 pounds of battery. Right now, I've got about 45 minutes. 45 minutes. And I wanted to use a proven conservative uh, integrated system with controller, charger, battery, prop engine monitoring system and which, which, which was uh, available and I could really see how the airplane worked. It's like turning on a ceiling fan. <laughs> you just push the rheostat forward and it just winds up. You just push a little more forward, you want thrust, you just put it exactly where you want it. If you want to increase your, your glide a little bit, you just want to sustain a little bit or get to the next thermal. There's, there's no worrying about a two-stroke loading up, about a choke or exhaust or vibration. All that stuff's gone. It's, it's the way aviation like this should be. What is this? I've partnered with an expert in electronics and we're making a uh, Outrunner engine that's a three phase, that's a uh, leading edge technology here. That will give us uh, a lot more power if we want it. Of course, when more power, we need more volts. But uh, this power range is from 25 to 75. Whoa, really? One thing I discovered when you eliminate the engine noise, Basically 100%. You can't really even hear the engine. No, all you're hearing is the prop. Right. Now we're working on reducing the prop noise. And, the, and with this motor, we can cut the speed in half. That's going to cut the prop noise by more than half. I see. We're going to continue our discussion now. We've been talking with Chip, but Chip wanted to bring Don Line back in. And you are the man behind this particular package here. Uh, why is this a development that pilots would want to know more about now? Well, most motors have, they're limited and they're not designed for aviation. They're designed by big motor companies and they've kind of, we're not a big enough market, I guess. I suppose. And um, we wanted to maximize the power, eliminate all the problems that, are, that, are, that affect electric motors. And so bearings are out on the ends. They're, they're, uh, As opposed to internal? Yes. Okay. There's no way the bearings can get hot. There's no moving parts I to wear see, out. Okay. The heat always, thing. Yeah. I always tell people if they want ma maintenance, they, they, you need to go look at uh, gas engines. This is totally maintenance free. <laughs> And uh, that sounds good to me. I'm not a maintenance guy, so I like one that never gives me a problem. Yeah. This is going to help me do that. Is that right? Right. And not everybody's going to want everything, but 
I don't want to build two or three motors, so we put it all into one. Okay. Uh, it's a variable pitch. Um, ah, that's what this is. Okay. Yes, and you can also you can feather the wing for soaring, and you can also turn it backwards to generate a little charge to go back in the battery. Ah, okay. The uh, regenerative. There you go. Uh, thing I think we hear about. Well, so I got to say that while you're talking about a, a, a prop that can adjust in the light sport world, we can't have that in the USA. In some other countries, we can, but the FA said no, not on light sport. But on part 103, no problem, right? We can do anything we want like that. Yeah. So you can have this. So. If you can't have it, we'll cut the rod off. <laughs> the other thing, the best way to understand what this motor is, it's called an axial flux. And that's the same uh, design that's used in the Prius and other hybrid cars. Okay. It's the most uh, energy efficient motor in existence. And uh, until today, I was unaware that anyone else was trying to bring this to the aviation market. Yeah, and I heard you just come up and announced a chip that you found a source now that can be applied to the U.S. Uh, to the aviation market. Right. Excellent. I thought I was going to be first, but <laughs> that's all right. As long as you get it out there for the people that are watching this video, they're just interested. How can I get one? How can I use this technology? Right. Great stuff, Don Linebeck. Thanks for giving us that information. You're welcome. And keep helping this guy here, would you? This will be our next generation. Uh, now and, that we've and proven when would you think something like this could could come well, to this market? year? This year? Uh, okay, this year so this is a near term, not five years out somewhere. Yeah, no, I want to offer this airplane uh, for in the $20,000 range finish with electric power. Wow, I mean, this think year. about that number here. And again, folks, these videos are out there a long time. The numbers might change. We'll ask for Chip's web address here in a moment. But for now, $20,000 complete aircraft, everything you need, yes. and electric power and batteries? Right, of course. Well, that's. I mean, if that's not a bargain, I don't know what's a bargain anymore, but uh, that's less than the price of an average new car for an airplane. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Chip, a lot of great information here. We don't want to try and answer everybody's question. Uh, where can we find you on the web? We'll put it on the screen for folks. Just tell us where yes. we go. Aeromarine-lsa.com. Excellent. I've covered this kind of aircraft and what Chip has done in his previous uh, and ongoing career in aviation. Lots more about all kinds of light aircraft on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Chip, Don, and myself here at AirVenture in the Fun Fly Zone.